education um, isn't serving social justice and we've got to change that. I truly believe, in fact I know, that everybody can learn mathematics, it's how you're taught. The perspective I come from is that teaching and learning as it's currently done is inefficient to the point where you could almost say half of the learning capabilities of children are not being developed. So when a teacher comes into a lesson, they have a maths problem that they know connects to a big, worthwhile maths idea. It's something that ultimately in primary school is going to lead them to do algebra at high school. I'm getting to the latter stages of my life and I'm delighted that something like this is starting to emerge. This pedagogy actually works. In one of our very first PD lessons when we followed Bobby into one of our own classrooms and she demonstrated one of the lessons, our thinking shifted for what our kids could do. To see it in action happening in one of our classes where the children had no idea who she was and no idea what this kind of problem solving maths was and to see it work successfully, that was really powerful. She got them talking about maths, using all the mathematical language and things that we probably thought that our kids couldn't do, but we weren't giving them the opportunity to do that. Our children don't talk, so therefore they aren't heard, so therefore they aren't progressed. They also tend to be in the bottom groups because they don't talk. So teachers, regardless of all their best intention, have low expectations of them. They talk with single sentences, one direction, so the children are limited by what they are allowed to do. We're working in groups with mixed abilities, so we're all learning each other's different ways of doing it. It gives students opportunities to do their own thinking, to make their own strategies, to just talk about what they're learning. In the past, if you ask the kids to justify how they actually got to the answer, or the strategy that they use, they'd say, I just thought it in my head. Now, they've got the ability to justify how they got to the answer, and the kids are using strategies, or explaining strategies, that the teachers say, I didn't even know that kid could do that. And they're learning it from a peer, not necessarily their teacher. In this program, we talk quite a bit about how we work together and, and how we do the talking together. And internationally research shows that even though we use groups a lot, children don't necessarily know how to talk together. If you teach them the skills that they need to have and they understand what they're supposed to be doing, they'll go ahead and do it. I was in a classroom where the teacher was talking to the children and saying, you need to work together as a team. And immediately I said, why don't you actually talk about how they work together as a family, as a unit at home? Because when you talk about a team, you're talking about competitiveness. When you talk about families, you're talking about collectivism or communalism. It comes down to repositioning the students and making sure that they are given opportunities where they can show what they know. It's also that idea of service and support where the group's responsible for the answer and the group's responsible for everyone being able to explain the strategy they used and justify and say why they chose that one. And so that concept of it's a family and you work together to solve the problem and no one gets left behind, no one gets left sitting there shrugging their shoulders and saying, I don't know. You ask each other a question if you need help and communicate to each other. It's kind of weird saying to someone how did you get that answer because that's usually the teacher's job but it's been incorporated in us now and it's quite cool. I plan in a group of six other teachers, all year eight teachers, and we meet once a week in our own time after school and we take along a seed of a question each. We have a debate over which questions we believe are the most beneficial. What are the students going to come with and by the way of misconceptions? We're trying to preempt their thinking, maybe their confusion, so that we're prepared for it. And then of course we need to be able to wrap the question round to the big idea that we're really targeting that day. I think I'm good at it. <laughs> and it's kind of challenging and I like a challenge. I'm sad that I got it wrong and I'm very depressed about it, but at the same time I'm happy because I can learn from my mistake. We talk about motivational discourse. We talk about what do good mathematicians do. A proper mathematician never does maths at speed. 
They do it slowly, they do it mindfully, they think hard about it. They make lots of mistakes because making a mistake means you're learning. So in these classrooms, some of the comments that we make are, wow, you made a mistake. That's a good mistake. It's a mistake everybody else will be making as well because that's what you do on the way to building good understanding is make mistakes. There's a lot more enthusiasm, there's a lot more engagement. Students will ask, when are we doing maths? It's a revolution, really. It's nothing short of a re revolution. I had a lot to do with ability grouping because for 23 years I was an educational psychologist. It made me realise that most kids could learn. It depended on how they were actually taught. When you're listening to our staff now, in the way they're talking about the programme and also talking about what they've learnt through the programme to help the kids, it's a huge shift. People were doing their gloss testing and their PAT testing and got the results back at the end of the year and saw huge shifts in that first year and it was like, wow, we didn't think it was going to be that great, but it was. They're learning to engage with anybody in the classroom in a way that is respectful. We talk about arguing, but we call it friendly arguing, and we really reinforce the concept or notion of politeness, that you're not actually disagreeing with a person, you're disagreeing with thinking. I get to work with different people who have different types of thinking, and I get to share my thinking with them. I like that we go to prison to work and that we share all our ideas. Sometimes we can learn new strategies. When people go in prison, they'll work up on the board. Now that we know that our children know a lot more than we thought they did, they're capable of a lot more than we thought they were. Um, we've got children in year four and five who are working with quite complex decimal numbers where two years and three years ago our teachers would never have thought of giving them problems with decimals and fractions and percentages. That was just kind of out of the question in terms of what we thought our kids could do. It's not going to be easy and it's not comfortable at first, but the results are undeniable. So. I'd say be brave, be persistent. It's not likely to just be a one-off thing, so, you know, I can die a happy person. And my brother, I'm sure, will feel honoured.